Welcome to section 5.2. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the gas laws. Now, the gas laws were developed by these old timey chemists. Basically, these men of leisure went to their backyards or in their or in their private labs and described how the characteristics of a gas are related to each other. So let's go ahead and start with boil. Now, in all of these kinds of analysis, what we're going to do is we're going to keep everything constant except for two characteristics or descriptors of gas. So what Boyle did is he was going to look at pressure and volume. And so the idea here is if I have a container at a certain volume, I can measure the pressure. Now, if I go ahead and shrink that volume down, I can measure the new pressure. So remember what pressure is due to. It is due to the collision of gas particles against the walls of my container. Now, what you can note here is that if I go ahead and shrink my volume down, well, the gas particles are going to hit my container more often. Now, if they hit the sides of the container more often, well, that means that the pressure is going to go up. And this is what Boyle discovered. He saw that as you go ahead and increase the volume, the pressure is going to drop. Or in other words, pressure is inversely proportional to the volume, meaning when one goes up, the other is going to go down. Now, I can rearrange this proportionality to say that the pressure times the volume equals a constant. Or in other words, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, where one is the initial state of the gas and two is the final state of the gas. Now, Charles did kind of a very slick experiment. What he was interested in was volume and temperature. So what he's going to do is he's going to put a drop of mercury right above a volume of gas. Now, the drop of mercury is going to apply a constant pressure. So again, volume and temperature are the only variables here. So what he's going to do is he's going to measure the volume at low temperature. And when he increases the temperature, he's going to measure the volume again. Now, what he finds is that as you increase the temperature, the volume goes up. So what he can say is that volume and temperature are directly proportional. When one goes up, the other is going to go up. Or if I want to write this with a constant, the volume equals a constant times the temperature, or I can rearrange it to this. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Again, the ones are the initial conditions, the twos are the final condition. Now, what we can see here is, again, this is independent of the pressure. We always get this relationship that as you increase the temperature, my volume is going to go up. Now, we can go ahead and try to think about this a little bit more. If I have a gas and I cool it down, I will liquefy it, and then I ultimately go to a solid. Now, what's happening here is I'm going to take the gas particles, which are chaotic particles. I'm going to cool them down. And so they are going to go ahead and move a little bit less when they're a liquid. If I cool that liquid even more, then I get a solid, but my molecular motion goes down. So one thing to note is that as you cool something, you get less and less movement in your particles. Now, the question becomes, is there a point where all my motion stops? Is there a point where I don't have my particles moving at all, but are completely stationary? Now, if you look at that last graph, what we can do is we can extrapolate that line, that volume versus temperature line. And it doesn't matter what pressure you have, it turns out that we will cross this threshold, this zero volume, at a certain temperature. And that happens to be negative 273.15. 
what you might know as absolute zero. This is the coldest temperature matter can reach. If you've ever wondered how they figured this out, well, this is the experiment that showed what absolute zero is going to be. Now, you hear the word absolute when I talk about this temperature. And that's because we can use a different scale. We can use the Kelvin scale. Now, the Kelvin scale says that I can take the temperature in Celsius and add to 73.15. Now, if this is the coldest I can ever get, what this means is that Kelvin will always be zero or a positive number. That's what an absolute scale means. It means that something will never dip below zero. I can't have negative numbers. All right, let's talk about the last old timey chemist. And this is our favorite one because we've talked about him before and that's Avogadro. What Avogadro was looking at is volume and the number of moles. And so we can use a child filling up a balloon for our example. If a child is blowing more gas particles into a balloon, what we can say is that as we increase the number of moles, well, my balloon is going to get bigger or the volume is going to get bigger. So in other words, volume and the number of moles are going to be directly proportional. When one goes up, the other goes up. And so I could write this as volume equals a constant times the number of moles. All right, gentle people, that's all I have for this lecture. I hope it made sense and remember to stay safe.